You like that? I love this. Are we rolling? to our roundtable discussion with our very, very good friend, former NASCAR cup driving stud of a man. Stud of a man, that's me. Richard K. Mast, Rick Mast, you know, you used to drive the number one car, Rick. The Ford Thunderbird. Wait a minute, guys. What is this? That's, that's our a slate. slate. The new studio, is this not cool? You know what we used to do, everybody, if you want us? <laughs> that was our, we call it slate. Yeah, uh -huh. that was our slate. Now we got one of these dudes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Makes you feel pretty Hollywood. Y'all guys have moved up. Yeah, we're, we're proud of you. Just like George and, Jefferson. Exactly, and Wheezy. And Weezy. Weezy. You brought us a little present there? I did. I brought, I bearing, I'm bearing gifts, man. The old school classic car. Number that one. That is cool. Well, you told me this week at the studio you didn't have the jump pile That's up correct. Like you did those two. That's and he just says on there right there, Rick Mass Thunderbird. Well, certainly. Yep. This might be I, the, the... thing I like best is where it says adult collectible on there. This might be Which the, does make me wonder what's inside the vehicle. This might right? be the Indy Pole car. I don't know. Which is cool. That yeah. is one of your car I would have highlights. thought that the Indy Pole car would have been a mite bigger. Buzz. For adult consumption only. You know when we when I drove for school, we couldn't sell these to kids. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Our souvenir cold. trailer. We couldn't sell anything right. off our souvenir right. trailer to anybody under 18 years of age. It's the same still with the Budweiser uh, paint schemes and when they had the Jack Daniels and Jim yeah. Beam paint now, schemes. Now, so now yeah. since we're talking about the Bud Shootout today. Bud Shootout, yeah. Did you ever drive the school car in the Bud Shootout at the Bush Clash? Hey, man, that was the neatest deal. The Bud Shootout was neat. Is there? Was the Bud Shootout? Bush Class in those days. Right. That was the neatest deal. You go down there, and we talk about the winter time and everybody being so excited about the new changes, crew chiefs, drivers, engine combinations, and you're all excited. And if you're fortunate enough to be in the Bud Shootout, that's your first big deal, man, because you go down there, and all the media goes to the Bush, the Bud Shootout guys, right? So you're kind of in a little group here that's a little bit, you feel a little bit elitist. You know, you're not really, but you feel that way. Obviously, you run this thing. It's an advantage a little bit in the sense that you get a little more track time than the guy's not in the shootout. Are you trying stuff for the 500 here? Well, the, the shootout's always been, and you use it for a preliminary. You, you, you wouldn't take, you, you wouldn't put your best car. When you do all your testing, of course, that's changed a little bit, you know, through the testing procedures. But when time you get there before, in the past, you knew if you had two or three cars, you knew what your best car was, right, as far as handling goes. And that's a car you always picked out for the 500. It might not be the fastest, but it was the best handling car. That's one you used. Then you'd have the other two cars, and you, you'd try to determine what was a backup car and which car you'd use in the, in the Bud Shootout. So once you got in the Bud Shootout, if you're in it, you would probably take the second best car, okay? And you would work on handling. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what you'd work on. You'd use it as a test for the 500, you know, to some degree. And then once the race starts, then all that's out the window. You're trying to win the thing. You're just trying to win the thing. But the crew chiefs and the engineers, they're all gathering the data when you're practicing and doing all that with the car. And, of course, during the race, you'll the car has its tendency, whatever it does, and you'll tell the crew you'll chiefs. You'll use that. Way. You'll use that. Now, yeah. given but, that handling is kind of out of the equation at this yeah. point, what will the guys be working on? Obviously, we're questioning, oh, are we going to see a two-car draft? Uh, will they be kind of hooking up, see who works best with whom? Man, I can't wait for this to get going. This is, man, this is a mini Talladega. This is what this is going to be. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's Now like, that you're not racing, that now sounds not racing, pretty good. This is cool, baby. This is cool. Baby. <laughs> Tear them up, man. Tear them up. Now we got this new asphalt, baby. You know, and it's smooth. Everybody said it's silk smooth. Right, because there the were a bunch of bumps before. Yeah, the tires are not wearing, and the tires are not falling off. Man, when you get a tire on a racetrack that doesn't fall off in speed and doesn't wear, plus you keep it wide open the whole time, well, now you're setting up for some real good fan interaction with, man, did you see that wreck yesterday? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, what do you think uh, about man, this two-car draft, though? That's the damnedest I, thing I don't I've know. ever seen. I don't know. I don't think, has anybody figured that out? As far as why? Yeah. Not that I know of. I mean, you listen. Because you'd think a pack would be faster than just two cars. I mean, that yeah. seems to have been the way it used well, to be. Let's go all get lined up right. and, if and you go. Watch, if you watch the telecast, I mean, Dean W. and Larry, you know, and then Mike, I mean, there are three of the most, well, at least two of them, the, mo the most intelligent people that ever in racing, and they'll tell you. Well, which is, you know, the, which is the, which the odd man out that's not intelligent. Mike's out. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. But, you know, D.W. Lair, they'll tell you, okay? They don't know what it is. They can't figure it out. They talk about it during the race. Yeah. I'm looking at it during the race like, what is this, you know? But it happens, and it's cool. I don't know that that'll ha that will happen in this this deal because everybody's going to stay wide open and everybody's going to stay bunched up. Well, let me, let me ask you about the shootout in, in terms of that. I mean, the shootout is your first 
event back after a layoff. It's the first event of two weeks of racing. So are guys a little bit more conservative going out there because, well, because it's been a while or because they know they still got the duels qualifying and the 500 ahead of them? Do you, do you hold back a little bit? Let me tell race? you how you hold back here, Buzz. Okay. One of those Buzz shootouts down there when you, I forget when it was, what year it was, we were racing. Uh, I don't know, maybe halfway through the race. We come off the back stretch and I go, there's two guys in front of me side by side. I go here, make it three wide. No, I'm sorry. There are three guys that get jostled up coming off the You made three. it four wide. I went you? to the bottom, made it four wide. Rick Mass, you made it four wide. How many times have we talked Daytona? about this? I'm like, man, it's going to be cool. All of a sudden, I felt something because I had the momentum. I'm going to get by three of these guys. I felt momentum hit me. I mean, it's, the, it's an air deal. I'm like, who the hell is that? I knew somebody was coming. I looked, and here come the six car by me, Mark. Making it five wide. Making it five wide. At Daytona? At old Daytona? And he don't make this move to the halfway down the back straight away. Right? So so the corner's coming up pretty the fast. The corner is right here. In fact, when I look, I see dust, right? Because Which means he's probably on the dirt or right at the edge of the dirt. And I'm like, this ain't going to work. This is not going to work. And he had momentum. You know what I mean? He had momentum. I had the momentum, but he took it away from me. We get to turn three, and he's down here, and the track surface is up here. And I'm like... This ain't gonna work, you know. It's just not gonna work. So I just jumped out of it, right? We all kind of jumped out of it, I think. Well, I don't know how many did. I know I jumped out of it and it got on the brakes. And Mark goes down there and he's out of racetrack. He just shoots up the racetrack, right? <laughs> and here we go, just like everybody going and wrecking. It's the dirtiest thing you ever seen. But he was willing to try that. Oh yeah. And that's not exactly the kind of a move you associate with a Mark Martin. I think the next year or two, the next time I was in a Bud Shootout, we were doing the media or the press deal, you know, for the yep. Bud Shootout, and they asked me some, well, the same kind of questions you just did. And I said, let me tell you about an incident that happened one time, mm -hmm. right? And I said, I'm not going to name any names, but this guy went by. And I kept saying, I'm not going to name any names. I said, I think the time the kid drove, the guy drove the six car, but I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark's sitting beside me. He's sitting there, yep, 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 I did do that. I did do that. And I'm like, why'd you do that, Mark? It's a bud shootout. Mm -hmm. It's a mentality, guys. I try to tell you guys about the mentality. It's like your all-star race. We have the best, in professional sports, we have the only true all-star event. Did y'all watch the Pro Bowl? Uh, no. No, because it's not, it's not as good as <sighs> the NASCAR All-Star Race. It's because the, the NASCAR All-Star Race is the only true All-Star event what I always in all say. the professional sports. That's everything, what I everybody say. else backs up. Our All-Star Race, man, there's no points. There's That's nothing true. But money. You, right. it's, a, it's that piece of meat out here in your pack of dogs. You're, you're growling trying to get So it. what's the piece of meat at the Bud Shootout? Is it just the same deal. The prestige? It's the same deal. It's a prestige. It's the the All-Star is the money. Basically, unlike a points race, you don't have much to lose. Let's pin Before we wrap it up here, let's pin you down on a pick. Don't worry, we got other stuff we're going to okay. shoot. All right. Who you pick for this race? For the Bud Shootout. For the Bud Shootout. Do you even know who's in it? Because they changed the rules all the <laughs> All the chasers from last how year. Do you get in, how do you get into Bud Shootout? All the up. chasers Does the poll matter year. anymore? No. 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 All no the polls. chasers from last year. All rookies of the year. And anyone who's been a rookie of the year. Ever. Twelve guys from the chase. Right. right. Anyone, any, any past rookie of the year. Yes. Right. So Regan Smith, for instance, is in it this Kevin year. Kevin Conway, for instance. Kevin Conway. Okay. You're going to pick Kevin they Conway. He's from Lynchburg, you know. Um, okay, any past champion, any past, any past champion. winner at Daytona. Okay. So if you won the 500 or I believe so Derek the, the Pepsi race. The, Do they put a thing the on there that you've had to try to run five races a year before or something? Or I don't believe so. I don't remember. I mean, it's I possible. I, I remember. Think, like Derek Cope could run it. Derek Cope. He's going to run it. I'm going to go with the 29 car. Kevin Harvick. You know, yeah. that's who I was going to pick. I think it's a really? pretty good pick. It's yes. kind of, well, I'll, I'll pull it back. You really going to let me have Kevin? If you want it. Oh, I mean, it means that man. much to you. It doesn't mean I'll that much. I'll take my car back. Well, no, no, we'd rather no, have the no, car and you keep Kevin on Kevin. Okay, you got Kevin? You got Kevin or you, you got someone else? I'll take Harvick. Okay, Cutler? Well, I didn't know we were doing picks. I hadn't given it any thought yet. Oh, I, like, I had a lot of time to think um, about it. I'm going to pick... Denny Allen? No. No, Denny that's Stewart? a good pick. Derek Coke. Reed Spencer told me that Dale Earnhardt Jr. would win a race and would make the chase this year. If it comes from Reed Spencer, that's good enough for me. Didn't you just I'm going to pander. I'm going to pander to the Earnhardt right. Nation, and I'm going to pick Dale Earnhardt Jr. to win the Bud Shootout. Jimmy Johnson. Oh. Jimmy Johnson. Way to climb out on that limb there, Bass. Hey, I was gonna, I was gonna if he wins, he wins. All right, that's our look at the Bud Shootout with former cup driver, brick, first Brickyard pole winner. You won the pole for that Atlanta race. You know, yeah. junior... Uh, the we Kings last race. Right? Would have won the Daytona movie. 500 if his crew chief didn't make him come in. Sure, have won the Daytona 500 in 89, <laughs> was it, Rister? When, when DW yeah. ended up Travis winning Travis Carter, it? man. Travis.
Yeah, Travis. Yeah. Travis Rick Bass. He'll be back. We'll be back. That's our look at the Bud Shootout. Yeah. Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com. <laughs>